Do you ever get blank stares and confused faces when you try to explain what you do? Well, in this episode, you're going to learn how to turn those blank stares into ahas. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Leon Hovenetian. This is the Service Design Show, and this is episode 103. Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the Service Design Show. Here on this show, we empower you with the most effective skills and strategies so you can design services that win the hearts of people and business. And the guest of this episode knows exactly how to do that. Leon Hovenation is a business designer, business strategist, but he started out in the craft space of design as a visual artist, a graphic artist. In this episode, he shares his journey, his transformation and the challenges he had to overcome to actually get to the point where he is. We'll be talking about um, identity. We'll be talking about how to get accepted as a hybrid, somebody who's both from the design space and the business space. How, how to get people to understand what it is that you actually do and the value that you bring. I think uh, a thing we in the service design community still struggle a lot with. And by the end of this episode, if you remember one thing from this episode, it will be uh, the power of the phrase, show me what you do. Remember that phrase. If you're looking for inspiring stories and practical advice that will help to make you a better service designer, make sure you click that subscribe button and that bell icon because we bring a new video at least once a week here on this channel. So that's it for the intro. And now let's quickly jump into the chat with Leon Hovenation. Welcome to the show, Leon. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me here. Awesome to have you on. Uh, it's going to be a great story. This is the prototype of the new service design show format. So I'm excited to see how, how this turns out. Leon, for the people who don't know who you are, could you give like a brief introduction? Sure. Uh, I'm Leon Hovenation. I'm an innovation strategist. Uh, I work at the intersection of business strategy, human-centered design, technology, and in that intersection, there's a lot that happens. I spend a lot of my time doing service design, uh, innovation strategy, uh, the fuzzy front end, uh, where to play, how to win, all mm. the way down to launching new services in market that are either physical, digital, and everything in between. I think the I think we're going to talk a lot about identity, so I'll leave it. Well, leave we it will, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this question to give an introduction is already like uh, a challenging one. We have a new yeah. uh, section here in the in the show, Leon, which is a sixty second rap rapid fire to get to know uh, a little bit more about you. Are you ready to do it? I have I have to cheat uh, the first time. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's this. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> What's the thing that's always in your fridge? Ah, uh, almond milk. Almond milk. Which books are you reading right now? Uh, I have been uh, endlessly picking up and putting down good strategy, bad strategy. Hmm. Uh, what superpower would you like to have? Which what? Superpower. Oh, man, I am a huge science fiction comic book superhero fan. You, you can't ask me that question. If I had, <laughs> if I had to pick one, uh, I think it would be... Um, uh, 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 infinite knowledge infinite knowledge awesome and uh, this one what did you want to become when you were a kid what did you want to become oh wow uh i think my earliest memory of what i wanted to become when i was a kid was a disney animator i wanted oh. to draw the disney <laughs> animations yeah You're that was close. the earliest earliest <laughs> yeah final question and then uh, the 60 seconds will be over what is your first memory yeah. of service design my first memory of service design was taking a service design course in my graduate program, uh, which to me did not feel distinctly different than anything else I had been doing. And I was waiting to do the service blueprint and I didn't do it. And uh, that was my first encounter of what is service design, trying to mm. define it. Hmm. Cool. Thanks for this introduction. Uh, I'll try to add more questions to the list uh, for future episodes. Uh, Leon. Yeah. We uh, had a little bit of preparation for, for this chat, and this is going to be about your journey. And let's start um, this journey with the destination. So where are you heading? Could you paint us a little bit, uh, the, the picture of your final destination? 
Yeah, that's a that's a great question, uh, especially for me. And so far, my my destination is, as we've talked about, trying to stitch and knit together all of the experiences that I've been uh, that I've had in design and strategy, uh, consulting, the business world, the social sector, nonprofit, and figure out how to be a effective design leader without losing the design along the way, of becoming a leader. Which is uh, which is tough, and I know others are, are struggling with this, and I'm I'm trying to figure that out as I'm moving in that direction. So, how would you how would you say the the final state looks? What what is the ideal? What is the dream situation? Yeah, the dream situation is tough because I, I see examples or exemplars or or uh, heroes out there who who might be close to it, but I haven't quite found the perfect fit for that. So, I think the example is a uh, truly design-led culture, a truly mm. design-led organization that does all the things that we talk about design without uh, without having to substitute it for other things along the way, right? So there are great examples of design leaders who have reached the top of organizations, businesses, um, and and they sometimes just blend into tapestry. So how they do we keep that compromise. unique little thread? They compromise, yeah, mm. exactly. And you see it all the time. Take us back to to the moment where this journey started. When did you get interested in this topic? When did it become relevant for you? Mm. Yeah, so uh, way back, uh, I started off in the world of design. I think what is sometimes unfortunately called design with a lowercase d. And I think the design that we practice is design with the uppercase d. I don't know if you've heard this. It's it comes from the external world trying to bucket what we do. But that is more <laughs> traditional design as craft. Uh, traditional design is connected to art, right? Visual communication, drawing, making. Uh, and uh, I, I discovered early on that I was a, a bit of a hybrid person, that I had more to bring to the table than just my craft or being a hired gun who could draw really well. And uh, it's been a blessing and a sin since I was little that I could draw really well better than most. If you put me in any room, I was always the best drawer. Um, and it was just something I did. I enjoyed. It wasn't a, it wasn't a thing to showcase. It also wasn't a, 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 a tool to professionalize, right? I just enjoyed doing it. Uh, and I think as we've talked about, people would always say, oh, but you're, you're also so smart. And it made me think, are, are people who are creative not smart in your mind? Those tensions are interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, I think I began to discover that I could do more than just provide my craft and and provide my thinking and so hence design thinking yet another another term which i'm not particularly fond of that uh sometimes i get bucketed under so i decided uh, i i want to i want to give my I'd, I'd rather lend my thinking than than my my output as a as a crafter tool. right yeah or at least yeah. Yeah, both would be nice i guess right yeah, yeah. so yeah um what do you feel is at at, at stake here uh why is this important to you? Why this is important is uh, identity is a big deal. Uh, I think that's the theme. Uh, and being hybrid is a big deal. So a little bit personal about me, I, I'm really a hybrid person in that I do this design thing. I also do this business strategy thing. I've got depth uh, and credibility in both. But as a person, I'm a hybrid person, right? People always ask, oh, your name, where are you from? What's your background? You know, my, my mother is Cuban. She was born in Cuba, moved to the U.S. when she was a little girl. My dad is Armenian, so I have that name. So I'm this hybrid person who has these two distant, distinct backgrounds. And then people want to ask me about either. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm both, but I'm neither. Mm. I'm something mm. new. Mm. And it's tough. It's tough. And I feel the same is an inflection point with design. You know, design is not the things that have come before. When I meet people who have no idea what I do, they say, oh, so you you... Like interior design, you go, no, 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 it's not that. And then you're in the business world, they take another presumption. So I have to craft a new identity. And others, I think, are like me in that mm. space. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's always challenging. Like if you're defining a new category rather than, um, uh, I don't know, the, sort of describing an old category with a different twist, it, that's... Like I, I feel that that's the point you're making. It's like it's not a different uh, old category with a new twist, but by blending two things together, it becomes something new. And then you have to. There's a lot of explanation to do. Exactly, and I find that uh, 
I've, I've functioned for a long time as a business designer and strategist. That's yet another fuzzy territory that we could possibly talk about. But I have found when I'm doing that work with strategy, with clients um, and my coworkers, I find the tools that I use and the thinking that I use is not distinctly different from traditional strategists, mm -hmm. hmm. where to play, how to win, right? Um, uh, that kind of approach and tools they would use, we just use it in a slightly different way, a more sure. effective way that makes them go, oh, wow. What? <clears throat> like two questions here. Why, why do you feel um, that we aren't in the situation yet that you described where uh, we have fully design-led organizations without compromise? Like what are the things? Like, could, first, could you describe the gap between that situation and, and right now? And what is the big struggle for us? Mm -hmm. The big struggle is uh, a lot of it is cultural. So, and and there are some examples of design-led organizations that I think are um, a few that are making um, an impact, like Airbnb, right? And this is a great great company uh, that I, I feel strongly about because it it arose from my graduate, sorry, my undergrad. Uh, there was a couple of Rhode Island School of Design grads who went out there and maintained their ethos all the way up. Uh, even in this COVID time, they had to release a bunch of people. And I don't know if you noticed that the CEO, Brian Chesky, wrote a very heartfelt, empathetic message that has resonated throughout the business community saying, this is what empathy looks like. Mm. Uh, so we as as uh, designers in the business world are synonymized with empathy and maintaining that empathy to answer your question is hard when you get to the top of that system because it's business and business is not always empathetic, right? At so least I, that's, I that's not the heritage to... of business. That's not that's not the way we think about business. Exactly, we. and I think we exactly, yeah. and I think uh, I think maintaining that empathy, like uh, you might see in Airbnb and other companies, is rare and doesn't happen often um, because of the constraints and pressures. It's cultural, is is the, your answer? There are a lot of pressures there with people who think differently, and it's hard to it's hard to shift that. Yeah, mental models, uh, things that have become mm -hmm. ingrained in. Uh, education in yeah. uh, news, right? Right. That's that's. Yeah. I, I'm yep, curious. I, I, yeah, you have so much experience, and you've worked <laughs> with so many uh, people. You're on a you're on a mission. You're on a journey to get to that destination. But uh, if yeah. you look back at the years and uh, the road that you've traveled before. Mm -hmm. What were some of the challenges that you had to overcome or that you yeah, that you had to overcome that helped you to close this gap a little bit? Yeah, so the, the challenges are when you make these leaps uh, over these gaps and chasms in your life when you're shifting from one thing to the next. It can be a career level. It can be a discipline level. It can be within design. So we know a lot of people who start off as an industrial designer, I see a lot in your show, yeah. they become a service yeah. designer. A graphic designer becomes this. Um, in my case, I started off on the visual communication side as an illustrator, right? So my pedigree was going down storyboarding and comic books. And, and then that was and your career out, path, the destined career path. Early on, early yeah. on, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. and then people keep telling me how important storytelling is in business. I said, I've been telling, that's my job as a storyteller. <laughs> but how do you not just become the storyteller? So right. I find the gap yeah. is, is is um is bringing forward your your skill what makes you useful in that situation to work with others but um but not not getting pigeonholed in their mind by being able to do that one thing and also not over explaining i'm guilty of over explaining and keeping it simple is a big deal and i think you demonstrate more with actions and with words sometimes and if you can tell them you can do this other thing but often just doing it and they say wow can you show me how to do that? Mm. Then you're then mm. you're on the path of learning, and learning is the path of understanding and empathy. And empathy is the part of the fabric of culture. So um, to dig into this point, you you said it's about showing, uh, not over explaining at the start. Any examples or stories that you think where this, yeah, where this uh, sort of demonstrated or materialized in your own practice? Yeah. Uh, so. I was, uh, I, I, as a business designer in my previous firm, so currently I'm an innovation strategist with Doblin, which has a tremendous heritage in innovation, of, obviously, uh, with the 10 types and whatnot. But before that, I was at Fjord and got to work with really amazing people, including, including Robert Bao, who you've had on this show. Um, 
And the space of business design, even in there, was a bit murky. People would say, so what, even in, in the group we were mm-hmm. at, what is business design? So I had to demonstrate what was business design. And it meant having to roll up my sleeves and explain with models and examples and on projects demonstrate, this is how you frame the value. This is how you create a measurement strategy and bringing others in. So they say, oh, wow. So it's like this. You say yes. And then you step back and they get it. The client likes it. And then, and then it's, it's happening. So it's, it's literally having to sit down with people and walk them through it. Any, any examples of um, uh, aha moments that happened both for you and the people you were explaining to? I, be, because I guess you also must have had some enlightened moments that you, you were like, oh, if I show them this or if I explain it uh, in, in that way, then it suddenly clicks. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, I had piloted a, uh, a, a workshop at, in my last firm, which was a business design 101. And it was an immersive uh, half day experience to show them what is it we really, really do. And I think it was uh, having to turn these things into tangible experiences. So people get very freaked out if you take them outside their swim lane, please forgive the pun. If they if they haven't done service design, they're very confused. Well, what is a blueprint? How do you make it happen? If they're service designers, they're very confused. Well, what are, what are you doing as a business designer? How does this work with us? So I think my experience in these sort of things, like in a workshop is just make it tangible and real. So if we have a, a case study and it's this company and they wanna be this thing, uh, what would you be doing as a service designer? They would explain and say, okay, so as a business designer, we're doing a very similar thing. We're working with you. We do this thing and we bring them over and we show how that connects the dots. I think the aha moment was turning it into more of a narrative Hmm. and just getting away from the titles, right? It's no longer about the thing. It's just, here's something you should be doing as well with me, or we could be doing together. So it's from what I hear you saying, it's... um grabbing a generic concept or uh, a phrase and then actually giving it meaning okay and you, you use the the word narrative building a story around it um mm-hmm. right it, it, it's a story that happens in somebody somebody's head right innovation mm-hmm. designer yep. i don't it can mean anything but let's build a shared understanding of what it is and is, is that is that how it worked for you very often, yes. Uh, what What is the story that we're sharing around this that people can tell? And then it comes back around and you say, that sounds like the story I'd like to hear about what we're doing, let's say, in mm-hmm. business design. So, you know, how, how on projects, if we're working together and we're working with a client, can I be, can we be the voice of the business in all the things we're doing, but be relentlessly human-centered? What does that look like? And they say, oh, okay, so you're you're part of what we're doing. Absolutely. And then we go in and then we start giving the stories and examples. It's kind of like writing a value prop. Is it? How, yeah. How, wh- why, do you, why do you feel the way? So, you know, that's a great example. Value propositions are often these uh, tools of business that, well, you know, let, let's let the business people craft them. But all we're doing is crafting a story. Why are we doing this? Who are the people that we'd like to work with? What value, value are we giving with them? And if we're doing this right, co-creating with them. How are we doing it? You know, what, it, it, that's it. Yeah, which problems are we solving? Like identify, maybe identifying the problem first and then uh, pointing out that that's an area of expertise where people like you, I, us collaborate to, to create solutions, something like that. You, you, you inspired me actually to remember a big part of what we would do if you're in innovation space or a strategist. I think service designers should be doing this who are in the strategic end is reframing the problem, right? It's an mm-hmm. exciting it part of yeah. what we do all, all the time. Uh, in certain organizations, that might just be the domain of business design or an innovation strategist or a service strategist, right? Mm-hmm. That's a new title that differentiates from service design. Um, reframing the problem is exciting. And, and, and it's it, instead of just diving into mapping it out, first, let's flip the orthodoxy, right? If the problem is uh, people are having a hard time getting access to food or meals, well, how, how do we flip that? How do we get the meals to come to them? Simple. And it's like, wow, okay, I haven't, I haven't been thinking about that. Step one. And then what's the story around that? Step two. And then step three, we can get in all the other stuff. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. 
if we go back to your uh, your, your journey and the the quest for getting this new hybrid identity accepted as something uh, uh, unique and uh, and valuable. Yeah. Any yeah any other challenges uh, stories that come to your mind? Challenges mm -hmm. that you had to overcome. How did you do it? Yeah. Uh, so from from the context of, of professional life, it's uh, you being associated with the front end of problem and implementation are two separate identities. Uh -huh. Service design is supposed to be this promise that bridges it. Hmm. Very difficult to 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 have that identity to say I can reframe your problem but i can also deliver something mm -hmm. real mm -hmm. and in market and those two groups whether it's in design whether it's in business whether it's in technology are usually very far apart and trying to bring them together there's been a lot of talk about it this also becomes a cultural problem like we said at the beginning but is a very very difficult thing to do and once again you know i come from a background of making things i know how to make things and i have made things both you know, a, a little illustration or an entire sure. digital service. You can also think about the problem. And do you, um, have you, it, is one of the two ways harder? Like, is it harder to um, get accepted as a strategist coming from a craft background? Or is it harder to uh, get accepted as somebody who's also doing implementation when you're seen as the strategy guy, girl? So as someone who does both and has done both, I think the reframe of your question is it's not it's not harder to get accepted in. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get out, hmm. Hmm. if that makes sense. So sure. I have found, uh, wh which, I have found wh yeah, which of these two? Yeah, which of these two is harder? I, I honestly think that they, they are both uh, equally hard in different ways. Hmm. And I know it's, it's a nuanced <laughs> question because I think I think life is less about absolutes but more of shades of gray of course but i think if you if if if, if you ask me in my experience i actually believe I, I used to think it was harder to move from the craft side the delivery side implementation side to the strategy side and and now that i'm firmly on the strategy side currently i have found people raise an eyebrow and say yeah but can you actually make things real and you go oh god that's it's back to the beginning, right? Uh, if you if you're a craft person who draws, what business do you have being in, in business? Once you get in business, so I think it's I, I think they both have their challenges. But I would say, from my point of view, right now, uh, shifting back to delivery of an implementation and creation right now for me feels a bit harder because people have their domains and they want and they want to they want to know they can trust you to make something. Mm. And have Not you been? Yeah, it. have you been in a project or a situation where this was actually happening, where a client was pushing you you back on this? And if so, what did you do? Yes, uh, I have. And the the best thing to do, I think, in those circumstances is to um, not over explain. Keep <laughs> it simple. And if you have that experience, walk them through what it looks like. And this is where collaboration and co-creation is so crucially important. I don't think it's always uh, uh, important for you to claim your identity at all times. So if you have another person in there who does that, then let them step up to bat and, like and, how? and take what? that hit. Go ahead. Yeah, like how? The second person, you, what, what would they do? So uh, working with people who are on the delivery side who create uh, the digital mm. technology. They're mm -hmm. creative technologists, let's okay. say, right? And for all intents and purposes, the only thing that the, the the client sees in the moment is that title. They don't know them. They don't know what your history. I could have been that person if brought in at that moment, right? Uh, but you bring them in and you, you, you let them support support the proposition and say, yeah, this can get built. Here First, let me open up my credentials. Let me show you my weapons. And they're like, oh, those are impressive weapons. Great. And then you send them out. And uh, and then I think as the as the conversation evolves, the trust gets there. They also see you as part of that that journey. So, so you might need them to open the door for you. Yeah. So it it, it is uh, splitting out the roles into different characters is one of of these. It's not even a strategy. It's a really a tactical uh, 
thing. And then maybe what some at some point happens is that a client starts to see you as a team rather than I individuals. And then as a team who can do both strategy and delivery. Is is mm -hmm. that something that, that, that happens? Yes. Is that the transition? Yes, I, that is a transition. It's also a really great uh, embodiment, I think, of what I'm tackling is because when you're at... Um, being a design leader means really uh, removing yourself from being siloed as part of these groups. You have to be able to be seen as all. And you have to be able to communicate with all of these groups and these individuals. So you have to bring the trust, the credibility, but you also need to, in yourself, accept, you know what, I am I can be all these things, but none of them. So how do, how do I maintain that integrity uh, and, and, and pave the way forward? So it is, it is the teamwork. And it's co-creation. It's it's the ability for um, it's not one person's going to do this. Have you have you seen examples um, where this sort of uh, gi gigantically failed? Where yes. it w where uh, I don't know circumstances just prevented you from uh, um, sort of putting forward this new hybrid identity? Yeah. Uh, so some circumstances around that is number one uh the the credibility issue people want to see certain things in your bulleted resume or whatever is ahead of you that qualifies you for that for that thing and if you don't have that thing there if if, if you can't demonstrate it you're not going to be able to do it so that's on a personal level i would say on sort of a team level uh you it, it breaks down when you being a hybrid is great. You know, the, the famous T-shaped person, right? IDEO gave us this thing that we talked about for a long time. Uh, it works well. But uh, there, are certain, there are certain areas that you don't have expertise as well. And I think it's in that moment that you, you kind of shut up and you step back. Hmm. Uh, because I, I think if you do a lot of things, you also are in danger of feeling you could do everything. And, and you can't. Yeah. And you, and you, go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I'm just curious if this is something really practical that people can actually do. And the thing is, uh, making a list of things where you're not good at and just also stating that, like, these are the challenges I can help you with, but don't call me for these challenges. Or, I don't know, have a two-by-two two matrix where you plot yourself in a one area and just say, okay, I'm really good at this. But these areas, I need to collaborate with someone just to show that you know where what the limitations are of your own skill set. Question mark. Yeah, a SWOT, a SWOT analysis, a two by two. <laughs> is, you know, I, I make those every day, unfortunately. But I actually think that's smart, and I think you can create trajectories on that because there are uh, there are things even within your realm you don't do. So, for example, uh, I have certain limitations to my quant capability either bringing in analyzing data or the depth of which I can craft a, a, a business case. Business models all day. Business case, certain degree, but I'm not a finance guy. Mm -hmm. So there comes a point where I should really say, who who is another hybrid like me who actually comes from the finance background and we can connect and that becomes, so there comes a point where I'll set up the Excel, do something, but you know, I'm visually oriented. So I see numbers, but I don't calculate them in my head uh, as natural or intuitively as them. So hmm. that's a moment. And, uh, do I want to become native with that? Well, I have to put time into it. So where, where is it worth stretching down and going in that other direction? Hmm. If you, if you look back on, on your journey so far, what, is there anything, uh, any piece of advice that you give could, g could give people with which, what can we do on a, maybe even daily practice that would help us to uh, accelerate the path towards this ideal destination in uh, something small daily basis, a muscle that we can flex. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think first having a sense of what is the identity you're drifting towards. Uh, in my case, I look towards design leaders who are doing a similar thing and I try to, I try to pull that back right so uh instead of trying to push our current reality into the future try to pull the future back into our current reality and say well what what are the ingredients in that that that's a framework into itself so reverse me, engineering yeah 
Right. Backcasting. Right. Yeah. What, what, what does it look like if I bring it to, to here? And I know we do this with our teams. We do it with our clients. We do it with our work, but you can do this with yourself mm. and there's a, a self-improvement aspect to it. So I think there are little things in my case, it's um, having to learn the, the balance between being these things that I have developed excellence in and also being a broader thing to, to move forward in that leadership side. But I would say, for example, if you are a uh, service designer uh, who's more interested in understanding the back end of the systems that you're you're designing because you work with developers who do a certain magic at a certain point because it's a black box because you don't code. I, I think what, what happens is you, you can do daily rituals to get around it. Uh, I have found if you ask people, show me what you do, they will sit with you for an hour and show you what you do. And you find tutorials and you do this every day. And what you find is that the, after a year, people start, you start demonstrating, they say, hey, can you code that for me? And you say, sure. And you say, when did I become that person? Sure. And yeah. sometimes it doesn't require a degree or formality. It requires just connecting to your network and, and doing the exercise. And and I like that question, show me what you do, because you can also uh, reflect it on your on yourself. Like imagine talk stand in front of a mirror and somebody uh, asking you this question, show me what you do. What would you show? What would it be? And um, maybe uh, like doing it as a mantra every day in and out, you sort of start to develop your narrative about what can you actually show, tell, let them experience about who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I get I'm, I get a lot of requests to you know connect to talk about talk to me about what innovation is or service design. It could be in my network. It can be from um, my uh, friends. It can it's LinkedIn. It, it doesn't happen as much that I decide to reach out as well. And so it does work both ways. I think uh, I think that's powerful because it, let, it lets it in. And uh, I, I just sort of really inspired me with this question, show me what you do. Because if you ask this question to other people, um, you'll see how they, what they show you and how they show you things, where they show you, what they show you. They will uh, also inspire you to think about ways you can communicate your identity. Really, yes. I, I really liked it. And you know what, what's happened when I've done that, which has always made me laugh, and it's the aha moment. It's when someone says, when you ask someone to say, show me what you do, and they explain it, and you realize, oh, we're doing the same thing. <laughs> it's just the name is different. And yeah. that gets back to the yeah. core of what we're talking about. It's like, oh my God, like we're doing 80% the same thing, except there's a name and label on top of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's it's the service design problem when you work mm. with a service designer and innovator and they say, well, what what do you do all day? And you realize you use the same methods, you use the same techniques, you read the same books, you follow the same thought leaders, you you read the same stuff. And it's like, oh, uh, you you you've uh, you watch Mark's show, too. And then you realize you're getting the same inputs. That's that's a moment. And mm. to me, that's an aha moment. Back to the, one of the first questions you asked is that mm. the differences aren't as as stark as they seem externally. But you have to ask and go in to see. And yeah, you have to be curious to actually uh, go beyond uh, beyond the titles. And you maybe we need to find ways to make other people curious to go beyond the titles. What, taking this last 30 minutes into account, what would you say is the morale of your story? The moral is uh, you, you can only be reflective to a point, uh, but don't don't waste time and don't be afraid to ask and keep it, keep it simple. I have found for me, cause I'm a bit of a, a thinker and I love to explore ideas and talk it out that you can actually get lost uh, with others and in your own head. Just keep it simple. If you go to people and say, Hey, I come from this background. I want to learn what you do in, in the listening and in the talking and in the connections, you, you'll, you'll find those, those boundaries. So, I would say don't waste time. Don't feel uh, constrained by your current identity or the, the world that you live in. If you say you want to do this other thing, just say you'll do it. Go do it. And you'd be surprised. Look at the people who are experts in their field and you look backwards at their career. Some of them, you, you wonder how they even got there. You, it's because they, they've told people after a certain point, I'm an expert. And then they demonstrate it and then they prove it. 
and then they're an expert. So it begins somewhere. Just do it and keep it simple. And just and, and, and run run in that direction. And in your own practice in the last years, what is the thing that you could have kept simpler? Yeah. Uh, explanations. Um, interpretations of things. And uh, goals. Goals mm -hmm. with myself. Goals with the teams I'm leading. Goals with the, the clients, both mine or theirs. Uh, you'll find that your clients and teams will tell you exactly what they want at the beginning. And all you have to do is take it in and either reframe it with them or put it back out. Um, and, and the same with, with myself. It's like, this is exactly what I'm doing. Uh, there's a tendency to chase the horizon. That's a beautiful notion, but you'll keep running forever. So sometimes you have to put something down and say, that is, the, that is my object I'm going to run to. And that object is this. And just just trust that the next object will be as valuable. You don't have to plan ten years ahead, right? Right. So it's great to look ten years ahead and say, "Who do I want to be?" But know that you're 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 looking that direction, but you you ha you're exactly. not paving the road. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's a th compass. There's, there's, yeah, northern star. Yeah, yeah. It, right. And it's the same reason why companies don't make five year, ten year roadmaps anymore. Because you don't know exactly what's around the corner. Things are moving too fast. Hmm. Uh, so just just be adaptable, be flexible, and just it, put yeah. put that marker down. Is there a question that we haven't yet addressed that you feel we should have asked here? Yeah. Uh, when when are we going to stop using the word design? Perhaps this is a this is a big one to me because. I've noticed a lot of big companies have in uh, it, uh, have put a, a influx of design thinking into their strategy methods, and then I think what happens you realize that they're basically the same thing at their core, just with a different mindset. So what when when does design get relabeled, or re renamed, or reappropriated, or when does business become design? When do these other things become design? That word is a tough one. And I found it's a very, the you, minute you walk to someone you don't know and they say, what do you do? And you just say design, that you're, you are, you could easily just describe the last thing you did in action and result. And they say, that's great. Don't say the word design. And if you put the word to say, really? Always. So I think um, the challenge is someone, someone should, should, should take that word back and, 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 or, or, or put it in its new context. That's a tough one. And I, I hope that we're all uh, uh, adding to uh, yeah, changing the context around design, at least. That's, that's what I try to do. And therefore, a, a, a new perspective on design. And the, the, the more realistic perspective on design, I guess. Yeah. I, you know, if, if design at its core is about solving problems or looking at problems differently, uh, I think we're all we're all doing the right thing. Uh, hopefully, I, I think uh, maybe ten years from now, w if we could actually fold that future back, we would we would be surprised at how the word design is being used and who's using it. Hmm. Any uh, recommended reading? Any recommended videos for people who want to dive into this topic? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I. In terms of design and, and strategy, uh, I, I've actually really enjoyed that book that I've been trying to get through, Good Design, uh, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy. Hmm. Uh, it's it's a great one. It's uh, Have you heard of it? No. Um, in reading that book, I kept thinking the entire time, this is a book geared to the discipline of strategy. And all I kept thinking is, this is design. This is what I do. Uh, uh, it, it, the word design is used a billion times every chapter, and yet they're talking about how broad strategies have been implemented, where the discipline comes from, who's using it, how you can connect it to uh, to to actually creating things at, in, in the real world, not just thinking about the problem. Uh, so I would I would recommend that as a good starting place to connect to all the other volumes of design mm. books mm. you may have. I, sort of to, to start wrapping this episode up, I feel like sometimes we need a Trojan horse and strategy might be a Trojan horse to get yeah. people to understand design um, e easier. 
right? To, yes. to lower the threshold, to, to lower resistance, and then to work, <laughs> work your magic from inside rather than having to convince people. Yes. Yeah, uh, I agree. If people want to continue this conversation with you, what's the best way to get in touch? Uh, many ways. So uh, you can reach out to me via email. Uh, also, I run a group in Chicago called the Chicago Business Designers, where we actually address these problems. Uh, it's a, it's a, a few hundred strong now. Uh, we have a lot of great uh, programming and interviews. Uh, Robert Bow, as I mentioned, is part of this group, including others. So we bring in diverse perspectives. I would reach out to that group. We would love to hear you uh, from you. Also, the Chicago Business Designers starts in Chicago, but it, we're, we're, it doesn't have to just be there. Uh, and I think the definitions that we're talking about are, are being debated there. So I would reach out to that group. Okay. And we can get we can get a link to that. Uh, we've got a Slack group, of course. We've got a mailing list. Uh, Everything will be in the are, show notes. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And also, uh, we we're doing uh, uh, online um, programming like this, so we're, we're shifting, of course, to uh, exactly. posting our stuff online. Yeah. Yes, of course. So, so we'd, lo we'd love to yep. see you. I'll I'll try to add all the links uh, over there, Leon. Thanks for sharing your journey, uh, your experience, your challenges. Uh, really enjoyed. Uh, I, I, the thing I'll remember from this episode is show me what you do. That question is super powerful. So yeah, thanks for bringing it up. Absolutely. And uh, it was great talking with you. I, I look forward to seeing your uh, upcoming episodes as well. This, so this show is a great resource, by the way. So I, uh, I check this routinely just to keep my, my thinking sharp. I'll add that to my testimonial list. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Leon. If you're a regular listener of the show, you might have noticed that this is a different format than we did in the previous 102 episodes. Let me know what you think. Uh, what did you get out of this episode? What is your main takeaway? Leave a comment down below or just send me a message on LinkedIn. And if you found uh, Leon's story inspiring and think that somebody else needs to hear it, grab the link and share this episode with them. That way you'll help that other person and you'll help to grow the Service Design Show family, which helps me to invite more inspiring guests for you like Leon. And if you wanna continue uh, hearing stories about skills and strategies that help you to design services that win the hearts of people and business, make sure you check out this video because we're going to continue over there.